fast. And that's what I'm going to try to do. Welcome back, everybody. I just happened to see the new Terminator, Terminator Dark Fate yesterday, and I want to give my viewpoints or my likes and dislikes of the movie. So let's get to it. And before you listen to this, just remember there are spoilers. So let's get into the story. The movie is based off Terminator, an actual continuation of Terminator 2. So Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, Terminator 4, Salvation, and Terminator 5, Genesis are all wiped from our memory. So James Cameron is actually back with the franchise. He did not direct this one, it was actually directed by Tim Miller, but he actually produced it and got old stars to come back in and film which is with the return of Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator, with Neil Hamilton as Sarah Connor, which is actually really cool. The movie synopsis basically in a watered down version is, Sarah and John have stopped Skynet. They go to live in Guatemala, where John is actually killed by a rogue Skynet Terminator, who turns out in the future to be Arnold Schwarzenegger's character as we get lower faster. So after the death of John, we flash forward 22 years in the future to where we are introduced to the protector or bodyguard known as Grace. And now Grace is an augmented human, meaning she's not a complete robot, but she does have some AI or technical upgrades. Think of the game Dose X and you'll kind of get the picture of it. We also are introduced to the protagonist or the main villain of the, of the movie known as Rev9. Now both of these characters are both trying to get a hold of the main heroine of the movie, known as Daniela Ramos or Danny Ramos. And her change of story from the previous movies is she is John Connor, meaning she's not the mother of the future savior. She actually is the savior. So as I was stating, Grace is sent back to protect her and the Rev-9 is sent to kill her. While fighting the Rev-9 on a bridge to protect Danny, we are actually introduced to Sarah again. She actually comes through and actually brushes back the Rev-9, blowing him up, as you've seen in the trailer. However, it is later explained that Sarah is actually getting these text messages from a random source that's encrypted in the radio Texas we eventually find out, that always tells her when Terminators are going to be appearing, and she shows up to destroy them. So she received a text giving these coordinates. We find out these coordinates are actually to the house of Arnold, who's playing Carl, or a Model T-101. Actually, the same T-Model 101 that actually killed John earlier. So there's automatically automosity between him and Sarah, mostly on Sarah's part. We learned also that Arnold, or Carl, has actually grown to have a family, meaning that he actually learned somewhat the emotions of how humans protect each other and how they grow compassion for each other. Not to the complete extent, but to a similar extent. And he actually has a family he meets, actually marries a woman, and actually has a stepson with her. Now, he explains that it's all non-physical, but he was there emotionally for her. And he knows how it is to be emotionally connected to somebody, which I think is kind of a good play on the Terminator 2 movie. After meeting with Carl, the team actually dispatches to go and try to get Danny to safety. Eventually, they figure they're going to take out the Rev-9 to get rid of him. Now, I forgot to mention this before, but the Rev-9 is actually created by a new type of AI known as Legion. Skynet is no more due to Sarah and John destroying it in T2. So the new enemy is Legion. And eventually, through many battles and chase scenes, we actually get our final showdown between Sarah the Rev-9, Donnie, Carl, and Grace, with the ending basically meaning the destruction of Carl, Grace, and the Rev-9. So that's pretty much the gist of it. I don't want to get too much into detail, which I did, I think, more than I wanted to, but it's kind of a long-winded story with a lot of little chase scenes and action scenes thrown in there. It's a two-hour long movie. But when I was making up my list for the good and bad, like I usually do, there wasn't really a ton of good in this movie that I saw that I personally liked. And I'm a hardcore Terminator fan, so I was really pumped to come see this. So my list for the good is kind of low compared to my list for the bad. Now, I could be nitpicking as, again, I am more of a big fan of Terminator. But again, these are my opinions. So let me know what you think. And don't always be biased. 
to just listen to my opinion and think, oh, it's going to suck? Try it out for yourself. So let me get to my opinions. So what did I like about the movie? Well, action is a very big part of this movie, as with any Terminator series or movie feature. And this one does not disappoint. I really enjoyed the fact that the old characters came back into play, meaning Arnold came back even though he was in the previous movie except Terminator Salvation as he was more of a computer graphic, but the reemergence of Sarah Connor. I was actually really excited that James Cameron came back, as I know his vision was kind of skewed in his mind of how he wanted the Terminator series to go. Arnold delivers like always with his lines, his comedic humor, even though he's not supposed to be funny, he is. And there's actually a line within the movie where he says, I'm very funny, that's why everybody likes me, as his new persona, Carl. Also, a great performance is done by Linda Hamilton as Sarah, as she goes back to her disgruntled, against-the-world kind of behavior. But she kind of grows a little bit throughout the movie, as you'll see during her interactions with Danny and Grace. Also with Carl as well. And besides that, it being a Terminator movie, that's pretty much all I can say was with the action and the return of previous characters, as what I really liked about the movie. Now going to the negative side about the movie, what I disliked was right off the bat, I thought the killing of John Connor happened too fast. I don't know if they were trying to do something for more shock value, or just trying to eliminate history as it was. Other thing what I didn't like about that was, we were told back in, I believe July, that Edward Furlong was going to have a small role in this movie. And he doesn't even appear, it's more of a reference to him as a child plays his character and he's facing the cam uh, away from the camera when he eventually dies. That was something I didn't like, I thought they could expound upon it a little more. Another thing was Legion. We only hear basic parts of Legion, meaning who developed it, where we have to assume it was developed by us, as was Skynet. So there really isn't a lot of detail gone into it. Now, I, this could be done because James Cameron's probably figuring a lot of Terminator people who were passionate about the series will come and actually kind of know this, but you can't assume this could also be a person's first few into the Terminator series. So that's one thing I didn't like as well. Another was, I personally did not feel any connection with the main heroine and protector. Grace, to me, seemed a little bit whiny and a little bit overacting in certain aspects of the movie, telling Danny not to go with places, yelling at her, etc. She did not seem likable. I Maybe I'm spoiled because of Arnold and the views of how he played the protector from either being the bad guy in part one as really bad or from being the character from two to five including even this movie as likable, like you can see a connection between him. And I didn't really see that with Grace. They gave a nice little backstory of how Danny saved her and she eventually grew up in the future, but I didn't see that connection. Same thing with the main character, Danny, as far as her. I didn't really see a connection there either. It wasn't too much as I saw with John, as you saw as John, basically a troubled boy who lost his mom and was looking for answers, basically a troubled youth and eventually grew up to be who he was. And actually, I think that was a great portrayal in Terminator 3 with Nick Stahl, when he's basically living off the grid and questions himself of why he's the one. Why is he the one that has to do this? So I thought that was actually a better aspect of character development, but with Danny, they don't actually do it. And that was something that really kind of like, made me take it out of myself out of the movie. In certain aspects, I mean, the action keeps you in it. But it was something that, to me, was kind of bad, in my opinion. Another was, James Cameron has came out and said that Terminator 3, 4, and 5 are wiped from the series, basically, in terms of this movie and storyline. They're in their own separate canon. Although he said he supported Arnold being in those, he felt that they weren't really up to his vision. But he uses things from those movies in here. So we're supposed to completely ignore Examples can be like in Terminator 3 when we learned that they didn't stop Judgment Day, they just prolonged it. Same thing happens here, they stop Skynet, Legion comes back. So they just prolonged it. Another would be the aging of the Terminator. From Genesis 5, we find out that Arnold's Terminator basically ages due to him having the skin and basically aging like a normal human because he has human skin. Same thing happens within this movie, he ages and it's assumed there. 
So that was something that I didn't really understand. Like if you're gonna completely wipe it and wipe all notion of it, but he didn't do that. And the last thing I can really say that I did not like about this movie was the explanation of certain things. Like I already said, kind of touched on the thing about Legion not being explained. But in this movie, they also didn't explain what the hell the Rev-9 was. We were supposed to assume it was like the T-1000. I don't automatically thought it was T-1000, but it can split into Liquid and a Terminator. And it would have been kind of nice for them to just say, or instead of saying he's a killing machine, I would just like more explanation of what the Rev-9 is. Maybe I'm spoiled from the previous in T-2, the explanation of the T-1000. Maybe I'm overthinking it. It's just something I felt while watching. Like, I didn't really understand what the Rev-9 was. Besides that, I mean, I did like the aspects that they were making a woman more of the hero, which is kind of cool. But like I said, they fell short with the story of her. Like, I didn't really connect with her in the movie. And I think that's something she had to do with certain heroines or certain characters you want to build up. Now, that's just the way I felt. I was also there with somebody else, and they kind of felt the same way. They had no way or the other. And they were fans of the movie as well. Movie series, actually, as well. Same thing with the Protector. They didn't feel a connection with them as they would with Arnold. But maybe we're spoiled because of Arnold and because of the way he portrayed everything. However, it's not a horrible movie in my opinion. It's just something that maybe I didn't see it was like up to snuff as T2 and I don't think anything is ever going to be up to snuff as T2. And I think Cameron saying that the other movies did not meet his level of expectation, I think that's kind of wrong because I thought T3 was actually done very well. T4 had a lot of flaws and T5 had a lot of flaws, but T3 was actually done pretty well in terms of how everything got started in terms of the war. So that was that's just my personal opinion. Now, you can take that, you know, throw it away, whatever. I'm just telling you how I felt about the movie, but don't let me discourage you from going to see it. I do recommend to go see it to see how you feel about it. Let me know down in the comments if you do go see it. Anyway, thanks always for listening and have a great rest of your day.